and uh, so how clever serves customers and community? Thank you. Thank you, Sufi. That's very kind of you. This is what I'm going to say when everyone's quiet. Tim Isles, you know, my employee sales. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, this is about Collabora. So you can, you can see lots of things about Collabora. Um, so we have lots of certified developers, we're great, etc. But I think to me, the more interesting thing is our mission, right? So um, many companies uh, write a mission statement years after they're created because they've completely lost their direction. And then there's a, you know, a committee of lots of people sit down and they, um, the great and the good come up with some immensely long statement. Um, and Collabora goes the other way around. We, Actually, uh, we, we just like open source, basically. We want to make it uh, rock, and so that's what we're doing. Um, there is a longer version of it, you know, uh, if you like longer versions. Um, but applying it to uh, LibreOffice, this is our goal, right? We want to make LibreOffice the dominant productivity suite on all platforms. That is what we're focused on. That is the mission that makes our shareholders happy, right? Our shareholders are not there for the money, they're there for the mission, okay? So that uh, makes us, I, I hope, slightly different to your average, uh, your average company. And it makes it fun, I hope. So obviously we're not dominant yet, right? So, uh, yet. We, we, we've got some very encouraging numbers. We've got some good metrics. We've got some fantastic uh, companies around the ecosystem and, and partners. But, uh, you know, so what, what is Calabra's strategy for, for uh, becoming dominant? Okay. So I, I've worked with a lot of engineers in my time. And um, I think there is a, a startling and important uh, recognition uh, that, that you need to go through when you're an engineer. And uh, you know, so, so many of you may have crept in. Um, yeah, there is no money fairy. Okay, it sounds obvious, but actually, yeah, some projects do have a money fairy. Um, so uh, Mark Shuttleworth, for example, is the Ubuntu money fairy. They don't have to make money, right? It's it's just a you know, like just imagine wild stuff and do it, man. Nah, thing, right? Sadly, that's not our our um, our, our domain. Or um, well, the Mozilla story, you know, this sort of a uh, huge chunk of money comes from Google, the money fairy. You know, that that lands in Mozilla's lap to do awesome things and, and so on. But um, as Calabra and as the Document Foundation, we don't really have that. Of course, our, our, um, we have a number of people that donate to TDF. But one of the sad things is some, some employees never grasp this idea that you're here to serve the customer, right? And it's important to me, and it's important to Calabra, um, that actually everything we do is serving our customers. Every dollar, every euro we spend actually comes from a customer, right? So they need to be happy. We need to make them excessively pleased with us. Um, so everything we spend, paying developers, hiring new ones, sponsoring conferences, evangelizing, all, all of it comes ultimately uh, from satisfying a customer. Okay. So, so we do a lot of this. We dedicate something like 10% of our time, one and a half people going to acquire new customers, talking to them, telling them about LibreOffice, telling them how they can use it, thinking of creative ways to apply LibreOffice in new places where it's not being used, um, tr you know, trying to reach people with this message that LibreOffice can solve lots of your problems. And that means hours of conference calls, emails, in-person meetings, pitching those benefits. And of course, listening to the customer problems, you know, um, trying, trying to help people uh, fix stuff. And so, just like to give you some examples uh, of what we actually do. Consulting is a, is a pretty obvious business. Uh, you know, you, you find your new customer with a problem, that should be easy, right? Yeah. And, and then uh, you design an estimate, give them a price, uh, and iterate with that to make it fit their budget or their needs. Um, they sign the statement of work, we execute, and they pay, right? So it's pretty simple, right? Um, yeah. um, so I'll just give some examples of where we've done that. So here, here's one example I particularly like. Um, so the customer comes and says, you know, we want LibreOffice to load large XLSX sheets uh, faster than Excel. Okay? It's a small, a small problem. Excel has had, you know, decades of performance work go into it, right? Um, so after some many days of profiling, designing, optimizing, tweaking, Matush, Kohei, myself, all sorts of people working on this, um, for sheets with, uh, well, for, for workbooks with eight sheets, 100,000 rows with, with, with numbers in them, you know, our, our previous load time was around 40 seconds. We take it down to four. The reference is seven. So, you know, we did it. Of course, that's just one sheet. There are a number of other sheets. We don't always win. Uh, this is the original. By the way, it's the log scale. You can't really show the performance improvements without uh, because these two start looking pretty small, right? Um, so, but we're doing pretty well in, in orange. So, lower is better across various large, large documents. So, one example of a customer with a problem, they come to us and we solve the problem for them. Hopefully, uh, well. Harbor enablement. We want our spreadsheets to calculate using OpenCL and GPU. This is a huge, huge project. Uh, you know, the largest refactoring of Calc internals ever. 
makes it run much faster on software. You know, even if you have no fast hardware, uh, we can do it. A huge team of engineers across uh, multi-core, AMD, and uh, Calabra uh, delivering a basically completely new design inside uh, LibreOffice. Um, and tons of unit tests to go with it too, so that we can actually check that it works. Um, so you don't need the hardware to get this speed up. Some of the speed up uh, is just there from the new design, um, but 30 to 500 times, it depends on the shape of your large sheet, but a very significant uh, performance swing. Uh, and again, starting to kick the competition uh, pretty vigorously, which is, which is good. Um, using your standards, so, so uh, another, another customer here would like um, Kamada files importing 3D models. It's a new open standard, it's zip with XML files in it. Has anyone heard of that before? Amazing, eh? Um, but all, all new 3D models, the new open standard for exchanging them, actually Google's uh, SketchUp warehouse does that, uh, it is uh, Kalada, and uh, we can render these down, many of them down to GLTF and embed 3D models. Now this one is not going to animate, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm too lame. Um, but you know, you can pan around it, and, and hopefully we'll be moving to starting to walk through things. You know, you're an estate agent, and you want to show the house, the model of the new house that you're selling to a guy. You know, you can walk through it in your slide deck. This is what happens when you go to the lounge. How about upstairs and so on? So, uh, fun stuff. 3D charting. People want to uh, have a live data stream. Consider financial uh, analytics coming in, being crunched on your GPU. So, streaming data out of some live feed, doing funky analytics on it, and then streaming it into a chart like this. Except, we have 3D charts already, but they're no way near capable of handling this much data. But consider the high frame, frame rate, zooming around and clicking these things and showing points of interest and getting just a very immersive view of your 3D data. So, uh, pretty cool. Interoperability, uh, fixing text noise, thanks to cloud. So some of these customers I could name, and I, we're, we're very pleased with our customers. Like I mentioned, every dollar we, we can do anything with comes from them. So, so cloud have been doing a huge amount of interoperability work. I have only one slide here um, because I, you know, I thought it might come out earlier. I didn't want to. Duplicate, uh, but this is one nice example of a very old, very horrible problem of embedding all sorts of crazy stuff uh, inside these uh, shapes. And uh, you know, now we can do a great job of that change tracking, uh, smart art embedding, and so on. Um, which has been it's been there for years, and we've been embarrassed about it. And you know, uh, but now it's fixed, which is which is really great. So thanks thanks to them. Other platforms. So we're very eager to have a an Android viewer um, and Smooth after you know, much uh, uh, discussion, has, has just been brilliant and, and funded uh, a great part of the development of this. Calabra is, is doing some too. Um, to get it, finally get LibreOffice, uh, Calc, Impress, and Writer onto the Android platform, so you can at least view your documents. So a whole load of tile rendering work, making it uh, quick and a performance, uh, reusing Mozilla Fennec, and so on. So another you know, encouraging uh, consulting, uh, consulting thing. Measuring your PC. So, um, Turns out that people want real-world um, you know, uh, benchmarks to, to test how fast their computers are. And that the speed of your computer is now <coughs> measured in Libra offices. You know? Uh, you know, how many Libra offices does your have? You know, so if you have a fast computer, it will go, go quicker. And so you know, this is obviously a very useful, large, real-world workload. And it's shipping in PC Mark 8.2. Um, you can download it, and you'll even see it pop up. You know, spreadsheets do fun things while, while the benchmark's running. So that's pretty encouraging. So lots of customers come to us, have a problem, they want it solved, we can do something for them that you know, improves their life and, and deliver to the format. But we're also interested in producing a product so we can get LibreOffice out into places it couldn't go uh, otherwise. So we, uh, we ship on Windows, Linux, and OS X, and we'll support on all those platforms. So uh, you know, people can actually deploy. Uh, so we have these you know, three years of security maintenance and support. Uh, that takes the problem of doing this long-term support away from the community so that you know, we can move on collectively quicker while someone goes and does all the boring work in the back room to please the, the customers of, of giving a very predictable uh, release version, any version you like, uh, cumulative customer fixes, MSP patches, easy to deploy, extremely expensive. Like, you know, you should haggle with us on this. Like, you know, if you're not, then. Um, 21 cents per user per month. That's euro cents uh, in the modern uh, thing. So uh, that's in volume, uh, 2 euros 50 a year. And of course, uh, that's for the maintenance of product. For level three bug fixing, we charge a fixed price. So you know, you have five bugs. You want to know they'll be fixed before you can deploy. We can help make sure those bugs are fixed, and you can deploy, and it will have a predictable price: uh, three, three and a half ish thousand euros uh, in volume. Um, 
It, we also provide an insurance-like scheme. Maybe you didn't use your entitlement last year, but it's comforting to know if you had five problems, they will be fixed. Um, so we, we provide a no-claims kind of a bonus scheme. So it becomes cheaper over time if you don't use it. Um, average pricing is one key. We are a bit um, of a pain about this. We do insist that we do all of your bug fixing. Um, so that you don't give us the vilest bugs in the world, and you then pay much less money for all the cheap ones, because it's average price, right? We need the easy ones as well as the hard ones. Of course, luckily, it's very hard to tell looking at a bug if it's easy or hard. So, uh, you know. but, but, but even so, um, that's, that's an important part of uh, what we do there. We also want to brand uh, LibreOffice. We want to tell people about LibreOffice um, primarily. I mean, like, we like to tell them about Collaborate as well. Uh, we want to lead with LibreOffice, okay? So, uh, you know, our brand is, I guess, inspired by you know, SUSE Linux, Red Hat Linux, you know, SUSE LibreOffice. It's sort of iterating in that tradition. It's very purple. You know, hopefully, it's distinctly purple. And, uh, you know, so we, uh, we have a, a license from TDF for the trademark to do that. And, of course, LibreOffice can come from many people. It can come from the Document Foundation. You'll see the Document Foundation strap line there. And it comes from Red Hat, and it comes from many people. Um, we'd love, I mean, I'd love to see other people using that, that model. Um, so that we're always talking, when we talk about Collabora, what we always talk about LibreOffice and we lead with the LibreOffice brand. We have a branding gap, you may have noticed or may not have noticed. Um, so the more we can talk about it, the better. Uh, I'm trying to be open. Everything we do is in public Git, uh, I think. Yes, and it's a series of Git branches, so you can just check it out. Nothing, nothing is closed. All the bug fixes are contributed back, but we have proprietary bi licensed binaries. So you can compile it yourself if you wish. Um, but we got a bit fed up with this, hey, we'll buy one copy and deploy it on 100,000 machines type thing. That kind of irritated me. Um, other vendors who don't do this have weird termination clauses in their service contracts to achieve the same end. Um, but we, we just go for the, uh, the, the basically a stock user for the binaries. But otherwise, everything's upstream. And we can't really sell. We, we have, a, we have a, a small piece of the puzzle, right? A customer really wants native language so they can pick up the phone and talk the local dialect of German in, in Switzerland, right? Or, or French, or uh, you know, uh, Belarusian, you know, uh, this kind of thing. Um, so, and we also didn't do level one or level two support. We're really doing only the bug fixing at the back end. Uh, we don't do migration or training. So we love to sell through partners. Our, our, our primary goal is to sell uh, through partners. And so we encourage and market our partners as well. Let me show you some of them. Um, so that you can actually find, you know, and get a LibreOffice deployment in, in lots of places. So these are the guys outside Europe. And then we have great friends, perhaps you know the people in ADX and Brazil, Eliani and Olivia and so on, and, and lots of other uh, companies around the place. In Europe, we have a, a number more, um, so hopefully some uh, familiar names here. I don't know, uh, even Sophie is appearing on the list. Look at this, look at that, wonderful. And uh, you know, Anfinis uh, group here, I guess. I mean, Core, Nows, Atomic, uh, maybe you've got some, some great, great customers here, you know, and, and friends as well. You know, Studio Sport, what can you say? You know, Marina, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so brilliant people, and you know, I can't emphasize more that um, you just do so much better to go to a local partner to us. Not only, not only is the price the same, I mean, like, we're not going to give you a discount, your partners don't get, but you just get a, a charming, competent, smiling, local person, you know, to help with your problems and to, uh, you know, provide a great interface to our level three services. So, so what does a level three bug fix look like? Well, this is uh, fixing um, pretty... Pretty nasty bug before and after. I hope you can tell the difference. It's, uh, it's always good to uh, <laughs> see that. Similarly, the not having anything there to having something there is a nice transition. Um, so, yeah. And uh, we also support people in, in strange situations. So I can't talk about all of our customers. The huge stationery company, for example, in America, um, and all of their invoicing goes through LibreOffice. So you know, if you want to print an invoice out, you, you get a PDF and an XLXX or whatever. And you can print it out onto paper, but LibreOffice is doing all the layout and, and so on. And so we'll support that. You know, you don't want your invoice, invoicing machine to break down. It's bad for your cash flow, right? You know, so, uh, so we help with that. Um, we help with uh, document migration. So if you use SharePoint, for example, SharePoint scribbles on the document. Uh, so as you check it out of SharePoint, trying to migrate to something else, it is scribbling on the metadata. So you can't see this document is the same as all these others. So you need something clever, and LibreOffice can provide that clever. These two documents are really the same, apart from some SharePoint and Scribble. And again, you know, you need support if you're doing this kind of thing. So, of course, our mission is to try and make LibreOffice available to everyone, to make it dominant, to smooth the wheels, to allow us to sell to people who have to have support. There are some companies who just can't deploy unless they can say, look, we, we have support, we have checked this box. 
oh, and by the way, we've done intrusion detection on, on the person that uh, you know, is, uh, is going to give support, and we've done this, and we've validated this huge form that has been filled in by someone with 57 checkboxes. So we, we help do that. But we also think uh, we contribute quite a lot in terms of actually giving back to the community. These are really just a few product things uh, that you can see. So, uh, you know, stopping regressions escaping into our customers' deployments is important to us. Um, so, you know, something like 40% of the test commits in the last year since 4.1 uh, came from Calabria. And we, we love that. We are, we are, you know, unit tests are a key part of reducing a cost for us and improving quality and improving it incrementally over time. Um, systematically testing documents. I don't know if you've seen Marcus's emails with the lists of you know, the things that crash or don't crash and, and the statistics there, but we test 55,000 horrible bug documents that we've had from Bugzilla, and we then look at how many crash during load, how many then crash during save in these multiple formats, are the files valid at the end of that? And of course, you know, that has a significant impact on product quality. Performance testing. Um, so Matush back here has created a uh, performance tinderbox uh, for us so we can profile lots of document loads for starts, various operations that tend to get problems with them, uh, saving uh, things as well. Um, and so we build a whole load of profiles in a, in a very nice controlled environment, and we've caught some significant performance problems. You know, there have been some 10x slowdowns that we've seen, and you see them in the graph pretty nicely, and it goes flat, and then the time goes massively up, and then hopefully it goes down again when we fix it. But previously, you just really couldn't see those. You know, you'd have to release it and wait for people to tell us it was bad, and now we can catch them, hopefully, as we're programming. So, in my conclusions, our mission is to make LibreOffice rock, you know, that's the punchline. And it's all paid for by our customers, so thank you to our customers. Uh, unfortunately, many wish to be anonymous, but AMD, CloudOn, uh, Smooth, Sousa, and more are basically responsible, you know, in large part for funding uh, everything we do. On so I'd like to clap them, would you? Go ahead. But they, 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 Do the, do the typing, you know, I mean, uh, so, you know, we have an awesome team, uh, as perhaps you saw on the earlier slides, without them, nothing would be possible. And without you guys, like the whole community producing this, this great product and working alongside us and, and having fun and doing all the right things around open source, again, uh, nothing would be possible. So it's our pleasure to sponsor the conference. I hope you didn't mind the brief advert in the middle. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much. Your questions? Question. Are you for the question? Do <laughs> you have okay. questions? Right? Yes? Yes. So, how can I help? Uh, I wonder how you. I wonder how you did the licensing trick. Did I read this right? Did you have a proprietary license? By the way, that's correct. <clears throat> so, of course, you know, we derogate to the open source license. Anything that has an open source license that conflicts with that. You know, we don't want to do anything to tread on an open source license. So if you read our EULA, it says that in big text, right? So that's the first thing to say. We want to respect the rights uh, of everyone that has contributed to stuff. Having said that, the Mozilla public license, which we use for 98% of our code, explicitly allows this, proprietary binaries, uh, as long as you have contributed the code back. So it's really focused on making sure the code grows with a copyleft license. So the code is contributed back and everyone can share it and use it. Uh, and that's the key. So it's really uh, focused on the source and on the binaries. And again, the reason, you know, like I, I think that's a win because of the freeloading problem. We have seen large numbers of deployments that think it's great to just contribute bug reports and angry noise saying, my buggy is still not fixed. And at least from our perspective, that's not entirely helpful to our goal. We want LibreOffice to dominate the industry. And every developer that we employ, we have to pay with money. And there is no money ferry, so we have to get that money from a customer. So everything that, that you know, impedes the flow of cash from, from customer through to making great open source software is something that we, we are concerned about. So does that, does that help explain? Uh, so if you said everything was openly available from Git. Sure. So if I check that, I'll you can do, compile it. do my own build? Or? Yep, so that's absolutely fine. Yeah. And, and we encourage you to, you know, like if you if you if you want to base your uh, you know your LibreOffice deployment on something, I would really recommend Labra's LibreOffice 4.2 branch because it's you know it's the pinnacle of uh, you know tested, hardened, uh, beautiful uh, LibreOffice, and of course you can compile it if you wish. And if if you wish to keep recompiling it when you have security fixes and redeploying it and so on, of course competitors can take it and build on it um, and, and perhaps do like it. 
Uh, but we, of course, love to do that in public Git, so it's there, it's very easy, it's all transparent. You know, as you can read stuff, you can see it. So, yeah. Cool, good question. Any more? No questions. Ah, two ones. Oh, yes, sorry. Um, if you like chocolate, um, <clears throat> I don't need one. there are little postcards in, in, the, in the pack, and uh, you can post them to your nearest and dearest. In fact, Stand up, Tim. You know you want to stand up. Tim is our charming, charismatic sales personage, you know? And um, he would love to put a free stamp on your postcard and send it to your nearest and dearest, or even your colleague at, in the office. Um, they may be the same, you never know. Um, and, uh, you know, help them enter themselves for a prize draw for absolutely truckloads of uh, table rent, which is inspired by made in burn and good stuff, right? So, so yeah, file online, vote early and often, and maybe you'll get some great. Uh, Thank you. I think that's about okay, it. Thanks. So I think we can make a short break. Yeah. Mm. Um, we have to change the block. Yes. Um, take about 10 minutes. Yeah. 10 minutes break. And then the state of the project. Thanks. Yeah. Cool.